Mike Tyson, often called the greatest heavyweight of all time, built his legacy on victories that shook the bravest fighters during one of the golden ages of boxing. In today's video, I invite you to take a journey through those victories where the cocky fighter received his lesson. Get comfortable, because we're starting right now. Mike Tyson vs. Frank Bruno 2 it was 1996, and Frank Bruno had to defend his World Boxing Council heavyweight title for the first time. In the ring at the MGM Grand in Las Vegas on March 16, his challenger would be none other than the great Iron Mike. Bruno tried to present himself as the rival to beat, but Tyson entered the fight as the 5-1 to one betting favorite. This was Tyson's third fight since being released from prison, and he needed to prove he still had what it took. From the start of the bout, Tyson went for the knockout. Without bowing to his champion, he threatened Bruno's belt at every moment. Bruno won't be afraid of anybody or anything, but Mike Tyson is a free time he comes in, he's an old. He's not going to let Mike do what Mike wants to do. And he's like early. You can't fix a chin that was never great to begin with. A left hook by Tyson, but Bruno comes. Meeting expectations, Mike dominated the pace of the fight. A flurry of punches in the third round, starting with a left hook and ending with seven unanswered blows, sent Bruno against the ropes. After this brutal scene, his title returned to the controversial Tyson. What Bruno expected, he said he's not looking. Combination uppercut by Tyson. Tyson for the Tyson of Fort McGillian Mathis. Here's a cut. Laying it on, pouring it on. Down goes Bruno into the ropes. The next day, the cocky fighter who promised to end Mike Tyson was subjected to harsh words from the sports press. The adjectives he slowed and he lacking were the best references to his career. Mike Tyson vs. Larry Holmes Back in 1988, we encounter another fighter who tried to beat Tyson before stepping into the ring with intimidation tactics. By then, Tyson was already the youngest heavyweight champion in history. However, he was far from earning the respect of the bold challengers lining up to threaten his titles. On January 22, in the ring at the Atlantic City Convention Center in New Jersey, Tyson faced the great Larry Holmes. This was Tyson's fifth defense of the WBC heavyweight title, the fourth of the WBA heavyweight title, and the second of the IBF heavyweight title. Mike was unstoppable. At just 21 years old, 17 years younger than Holmes, Iron Mike would show that experience meant nothing against innate talent. Tyson knocked Holmes down three times during the fourth round before referee Joe Cortez stopped the fight five seconds before the round ended. Mike, the undisputed champion, acted as the aggressor throughout the fight. He even made the ringside attendees shout in desperation for the fight to be stopped. After a true massacre in the ring, a right hand from Tyson stopped any life impulse from Holmes. As soon as Holmes fell on his back, Cortez signaled the end of the fight. In a post-fight interview, Cortez mentioned, Gee, I just felt I didn't have to bother counting. Holmes, who entered the ring under the promise of dethroning Tyson, ended up not fighting for three years after this devastating defeat. All that time to recover. Mike Tyson vs. Donnie Long If as an undisputed champion, Mike had to withstand the disrespect of his adversaries, imagine at the beginning of his career. From his debut, with his good streak of victories, candidates started lining up for Tyson, each representing a greater challenge. After his eighth knockout victory, the one expected to give him a harsh reality check and stop his rise was none other than Donnie Long. The match was scheduled for October 9, 1985, at the Trump Casino Hotel in Atlantic City. Originally, it was supposed to be Tyson's first professional eight-round fight, but it had to be reduced to six due to television time constraints. Regardless, the great Iron Mike showed he didn't need much time to keep leaving his mark in the golden history of boxing. Tyson <laughs> When the fight resumed, Tyson advanced and unleashed a barrage that made Long fall to his knees just past the one-minute mark. Once again, he was on his feet by the count of two. 
rule not being in effect, without even starting the safety count, referee Frank Cappuccino signaled the end of the fight. After this incredible knockout, Tyson sent a kiss to the camera, inviting all those fighters who longed to take away his unbeaten status to join the list. He had vicious punches reserved for all of them. Mike Tyson vs. Tony Tubbs. Let's go back to 1988. Before delivering the main course, I can't miss the opportunity to mention when Tyson stunned Tokyo with a sweeping victory. On March 21, the youngest heavyweight champion in history arrived at the Tokyo Dome in Japan to defend his title against a new challenger. It was Tony Tubbs, who brought an impressive record of 25 victories, 16 by knockout, and only one loss. This was the second heavyweight title fight in Japan, and the locals were eager to see a live massacre. By the merits Tyson had already claimed with the strength of his fists, he was already immensely popular in Japan. In the first round, Tubbs could exchange blows with Tyson and mitigated the champion's attacks with jabs and quick combinations. However, the challenger seemed flabby. He rarely moved while fighting, and this is a big mistake when facing a knockout machine as lethal as Iron Mike. Jim, we maybe he realizes this fight could go a few rounds there. Uh, I don't know. When the second round began, it seemed it would unfold along the same lines as the first. Tubbs stood firm while Tyson continued to increase the level of pressure in his offense, and this was the point of no return. It's going to be the stalking routine as always. As I say, this is about as quiet as we've seen Tyson start, but uh, that, I know that won't last long. His work. Tubbs' weak punches proved incapable of stopping the champion. Time and again, Tyson attacked Tubbs' thick body. Hooks to Tubbs' stomach were forceful. As the round neared its end, the effects of being severely beaten by Tyson began to show. The one who threatened to steal the titles ended up sunk under a succession of hooks to his abdomen, severely wounded. It wasn't until a vicious left hook caught Tubbs above the right eye that the punishment ended. After the impact, he's getting some, he's getting shot, his body's broken up on him, Jim. Tubbs staggered and tried to walk, but he ended up falling on his back to hear Arthur Mercant the referee, counting the seconds to his defeat. Mike Tyson vs Tyrell Biggs. E he's never fought someone like me, eh he assured. A someone with a strong jab who can box and isn't just going in there to survive, eh he described himself. And he ended up humiliated. In 1987, Tyson had to face one of the mouthiest fighters he crossed paths with. Tyrell Biggs. With an undefeated record of 15 victories, 10 of them by knockout, he felt he was the Avenger. He thought his height and musculature would be enough to withstand Tyson's deadly attacks and beat him once and for all. But the rivalry between Biggs and Tyson dates back to 1984, when Tyson was rejected by the Olympic team due to his measurements, and the spot was given to Biggs. When Tyson showed up at the airport to bid farewell to the team and wish them the best, Biggs mocked Tyson, assuring him there was no way he would get on the plane with them. Biggs ended up winning two things that year. The first was the gold medal in the super heavyweight division at the Olympic Games. The second was the grudge of the man who would become the greatest fighter of all time. Once in the ring, even years later, Tyson made sure to show everyone who doubted him who was the best. One after another, blows landed on Biggs' jaw, left hooks rained down everywhere, and for six rounds, Biggs could withstand them. It was a true duel of titans, but inevitably, Biggs' body fatigued and his defense fell. It was a left hook that sent Biggs flying to his corner, where his body hit the canvas with his feet in the air. Tyson achieved two things that night. The first was his 32nd professional victory without losses, the 28th by knockout. And the second, a personal revenge he had been preparing for even before his professional debut. Gone right now. He has no legs at all. And 
Like 10 seconds to go in around. There's a left hand. If you've made it this far, thank you. Do you know of any other fights where Tyson frustrated his opponent's attempts at intimidation? Let me know in the comments.